creeps, cretins, madhouse maniacs. Um, here we are, episode two of the Movies from the Madhouse podcast. I'm Master Seth, your master of ceremonies. And I'm Mistress Dandelion, your queen of creep. So, um, uh, it's April 2021. Indeed. April 2021. Uh, we are both halfway to being fully vaccinated for the apocalypse. Indeed. <laughs> it didn't turn out to be an apocalypse. I should have known better than to have my hopes so high. Oh, honey, you're always hoping for apocalyptic well, shit. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sucker for <laughs> unpredictabilities. <laughs> uh, speaking of unpredictabilities, um so uh uh for this episode, it was Mistress Dandelion's pick, and she did not tell me what we were going to watch until immediately before we watched it. Now, this is this is the way it goes. Next week, it'll be my pick. It can be a movie we both seen. It can be a movie neither one of us have seen. It can be a good movie. But we can pick whatever we want, but we don't let the other one know about it. So, she picked Dune. Yes. From, uh, what, what year is Dune? Is that 82? It's later than 82. It's 84, isn't it? Probably. It's 84. It's totally 84. Um, uh, David Lynch's Dune. The only Lynch film I had never seen. The only Lynch film he didn't really ever care to want to see. Because David Lynch really doesn't ever... He doesn't really seem to like this movie. No. Um, he... You know, he really downplays this. I feel like this is something he's not proud of and is honestly alien to him mm -hmm. well um, it seems like i remember reading mm -hmm. an interview with him where they asked him about dune and he said that i uh, it's uh, you know this is a paraphrase don't quote me on this it's just what i remember but um he said something along the lines of uh oh shit about working in na something about neighborhoods and not worlds yeah 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 he said he said he he said with Dune he had like universes a universe to work with right and that he was much more comfortable uh, doing doing that's what it was he was much more comfortable doing stories that took place within a few blocks yeah rather than a few galaxies and that's that's that works that works for Lynch and that was and I never I you're right I had never seen Dune and part of it was because also though because I'm not like a I'm not a sci-fi guy. Right, not you're not naturally a, a sci-fi fantasy sort of person right. anyway, and I am much more mm -hmm. of that. You know, I'm much more into fantasy and sci-fi um, than you ever ever are, really. Now, I do make a hard division when it comes to sci-fi. There's like sci-fi, and then there's like hard sci-fi. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a fan of hard sci-fi. Like, I can totally get into fucking The Day the Earth Stood Still. Yeah. I can totally get into Invasion of the fucking Body Snatchers. Hell yes. I can dig on Twilight Zone all day long, Outer Limits all day long. Mm -hmm. That science fiction works for me. But this hard sci-fi that goes into all this weird shit, and you know what I'm talking about. You know the difference, right? Well, I think so. I think, you are you trying to say more modern, modern-ish um, sci-fi? I guess maybe than, like, so. Rather than, like, old... The old, you know, 60s, 50s, 60s sci-fi is a whole nother fun world than what it became, you know, rather, yeah. than, rather than fun, they started getting really serious with things. Well, yeah, and it gets really deep, and it gets deep like fantasy does, you know, and I guess that's where science... So I like, I, I like my science fiction that can be mingled with horror a little bit than my science fiction that can be mingled with fantasy, and science mm -hmm. fiction is this wonderful little like uh what what would you call it the, what are those little they're like capillary veins like but they estuary. come off of rivers Est estuary is that what you call is that, that what it's i think called? that sounds that sounds about right oh gosh i'll be so embarrassed if i'm wrong holy shit what are well, you doing to me seth jesus christ on one side of the road you got fantasy and on the other side of the road you got horror and 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 these are rivers on each side of the road but there's this little they're estuary where little creeks of each connect and make science fiction. And it wavers toward one end or the other yes. as it flows. You know? Yes, that is what Neil Gaiman 
right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Neil Gaiman can can be can, is would be fantasy horror. Yes. Um and he can delve into sci-fi. He's he's one of those special special authors that can that can touch into all that shit. Mhm. You mm-hmm. know. Uh if you never read it, uh, Neverwhere is an absolutely fantastic novel. Oh, I loved it. Um that's the only Neil Gaiman I've read actually, <laughs> except for a couple of shorts. But um but nonetheless, you absolutely should read Neverwhere for fantasy horror. So good. It is so easy to get off track sometimes. I know, estuaries but of th- horror and sci-fi and right. fantasy. You know, this but, is why, like, I, I don't know, I like all things. And you tend to be so much more of a horror guy than anything else. I am. I am. So I understand why you didn't watch Dune. You know, plus but the, but, but But Dune doesn't really, that doesn't really work for the horror thing because none of Lynch's films are traditionally horror films right i've loved every david lynch film and for some reason there's never watched fucking dude and partially right because of all the reasons we've talked about yeah so i was really excited to get to pick this one because i really like this movie and i've always liked it um i've only seen it a few times and i haven't seen it in many 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 years probably so many years um gosh over 20 yeah and so i haven't seen it forever but i remember really really enjoying it and that it was super odd and and lovely and um cinematic and i was i'm very excited that we got to watch it and we're gonna go into all that because you know being the lynch fan i am i have i have been for the past Oh, 25 years or whatever, 20, 25 years, however long it's been. Um, having never seen Dune, I watch this through a specific lens. Sure. You know? Absolutely. And so, uh, so, so, and, and so if you're not familiar with the work, some of the other works of David Lynch, you might not be satisfied with this episode because I'm going to be changing people's names and shit because I saw all kinds of associations. Yes. Between this and some of David Lynch's other work. Yes. And I think we don't tend to recognize that because this this is, as far as I know, unless The Elephant Man was a book first, but as far as I know, this is the only David Lynch work uh, where he didn't write the source material. No, Wild at Heart is also a book. Wild at Heart mm-hmm. is a book. Mm-hmm. Um, and Dune is, of course, a book. Uh, uh, Frank Herbert, right? Is the author of Dune? I have no idea. Uh, I'm I'm almost positive it's Frank yeah. Herbert. Um, uh, but uh, 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 speaking of Frank Herbert and Dune, I know Dune nerds also don't want to watch this. Don't want to listen to this podcast. Dune nerds don't want to listen to it, and people who aren't familiar with David Lynch don't want to listen to it. Well, of course, or, because we don't know enough. Right, we're not for we're not, folks that are totally steeped and like huge Dune lovers. Um, we're like kind of, you know, uh, we're new at this yeah. and I haven't seen it in forever and you've never seen it. So we're coming at it as casual film goers with some very strong opinions and preferences about things. Right. Long story short. Right. Right. I was trying to tell the long story and then I switched off on, I went (laughs) to a different tributary. Yeah. Tributary. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but we we are coming at you right out of Eugene, Oregon. We are one of the pot legal states. So just wanted to put that out there for a second. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm, I'm rolling right along. I'm flowing. I'm flowing. <laughs> Tributaries be damned. <laughs> Fucking Dune. Okay. Uh, Dune, Dune, Dune was cool. Uh, Dune, of course, comes out around the same time. You know, you got Star Wars shit going down. Now, I was a small child in 1984 when Dune came out. So I don't know how big of a hit it was. I know the Star Wars shit was like in full... Was, I mean, wasn't 83 when Empire came out? I don't know. I was too busy I, being a rotten, horrible teenager that was a runaway and, you know, doing crazy things like... What I was doing in that time, <laughs> not being a tiny child. Well, that was probably better than watching Dune. 
Although I had fun watching doing the other night. Yeah, that was really fun. I had fun once I finally saw Dune, even though I was a crazy, <laughs> whacked out, <laughs> fucked up teenager. I mean, I, probably, I think I finally saw it when I was like 15 or yeah. 16. And when I had calmed down some and was growing <laughs> up. And um, it was on cable. And I saw it a couple different people's houses. And was like, ooh, we have to watch this. I've never seen Sting be cool, except for in this movie. Well, uh, Sorry the, if people what? like Sting, but like, bleh. Um, but yeah. Oh, in this, no, believe me. In I'm, this I'm, movie, I... uh, he's cool. No, he's As, not. He's cool at being a total no, fucking asshole. Not. Sting sucks all the time. No I'm way. waiting. I was going to wait till later no. in the episode to go into my thing about fucking Sting. No. You know how I feel about Sting. I do. I God do. damn it. <laughs> Fucking sting. He's awesome in he this. He sucks. Nah. -uh. He's an asshole. Of course, but that's why he's awesome. Because he's an asshole. And he's got a cool name. You never think I'm awesome when I'm an asshole. No, of course not, because when you're an asshole, <laughs> you're totally an asshole. <laughs> Luckily you've never you've never stuck a knife up through my chin, but we'll get to that. Oh yeah. I would never do that. I love you. <laughs> All right, so Dune, David Lynch, 1984, starring Kyle MacLachlan. Yeah. And uh, Jack Nance. And... Uh, Everybody. So many people. Everybody. Jose Ferrer is in it. Mm -hmm. um, scary German guy's in it. Scary German guy. Monster Squad. I love that. Um, Everybody's in it. Brad Dourif. Brad Dourif. Chucky. Yeah, yeah. Um... um Oh my gosh. Dean Stockwell. <gasps> Dean Stockwell. A.K.A. Ben from Blue Velvet. A.K.A. Al from uh, Quantum Leap. Yes. Mm hmm. I love that guy. I do. There's the so Exorcist many... is in it. There's so many people. What? The Exorcist was in oh, it. Oh, yeah, that. Max Fucking... Falsito. Yeah. Was he the Emperor? Who was the Emperor? The Emperor was Jose Ferrer. Okay, that's right. No, not the Emperor. The Admiral. Right? The oh, Admiral. Oh, no. My Google was machine it, ain't working right. Is it the right. Emperor or the Admiral? The Emperor. Oh, my God. What the hell are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. <laughs> Jesus told me so. You know what that's from? It's all right. It's okay. That's from a movie called Coven that oh. nobody saw, but a lot of people saw the documentary about Coven called American Movie about the two fucking guys from minnesota or whatever that tried to that and it was a documentary about them making a movie but they were these fucking long-haired totally midwestern just dudes i hope it's midwestern i might be offending a bunch of people right oh now god i need to watch that you need to watch it yeah but anyway one of the clips from it was and i'm just i'm just killing time until i find what i was looking for but um one of the clips from it was this old man in the passenger seat of a truck that was riding down the street and he yells at some people it's all right it's okay jesus told me so <laughs> and it's stuck it's been stuck in my head ever since jesus told me so jesus told me so 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 yeah jose ferrer was the emperor scary german guy was the baron's doctor yes that's right all right. Fucking dude. Okay. <laughs> Let's get into it. Uh, my notes, these notes of that I have taken are a fucking mess. They're hilarious. They're a fucking mess. I, I, I mean, you know, I, oh man, I, I, my handwriting is so bad. I can't read some of it. <laughs> so we'll just see. So we start off with this close up of this young lady's face, right? And she's explaining spice and its magic powers and shit. Now, it's only available on one planet, Arrakis. That was it, all right? Arrakis? Yes. And then, for some reason, they call it Caledon, right? Yeah, I think so. I think or so. Or Caledon is the another planet. I think and Caledon's Arrakis, another one. There's, there's, Arrakis is the planet There's Caledon and there's Gita Prime. Spice is... And, and Spice controls the universe. It prolongs life. 
and um, right. and also like opens up your consciousness. Yeah, it's... all of those things. I'm I'm never completely clear exactly what the spice does and what it's for for sure. You know, you know. Well, I mean, partly just what I said. And, well, no, I know. And the orange spice, um, literally is something that helps you fold time. Right. Right. So, <laughs> so of course, I mean that's a beneficial thing. Never mind, I forgot about that. Yeah, the folding, <laughs> the folding time thing, being able to move through time and space without. You know, I mean, just instantly. I, you know how I am yeah. about that. I'm I'm a huge Madeline Langle fan, and I read Wrinkle in Time as a little tiny, tiny child and Swiftly Tilting Planet and all this shit. So I love the idea of the Tesseract. And so I think of like, ooh, Orange Spice, what? You can just move through time like that? No wonder people, no wonder, you know, they're all about it. Plus, it prolongs life, and it gets you like super high and opens your whole consciousness and you become one yeah with everything i guess it's just the perfect substance mhm the perfect thing to do mhm and everybody's into it so here's where i got excited was now the credits started and it says that it was photographed by freddie francis i was like freddie francis hot yes. bitchin' a <laughs> Freddie Francis did uh, he he directed some movies he directed Dr. Terror's House of Horrors he directed a bunch of shit uh, he was a cinematographer on all kinds of shit um, but he was a cinematographer on this uh, but yeah he worked with Hammer and Amicus and all that shit you know did all kinds of shit he also did uh, he did um, by Lynch he did uh, the, the Straight Story and he did The Elephant Man mm-hmm did you ever see the straight story? I did with you. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's a, that's a that's an interesting Lynch film. It's a Lynch film that just takes it just doesn't show anything happening in the bad neighborhoods. Right. Of Lynch world. Right. You know? It's just in the good neighborhoods of Lynch world. Yeah. That's yeah, a that's a good way is. to put it. That's a really good way to put it. It's just it doesn't go to the bad neighborhoods in Lynch world. Right. That guy rides his tractor through the most pleasant vistas it's of Lynch so world. It's sweet. Like, honestly, it's very sweet and slow going. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. And beautiful. It's a lovely film. I think so. Walt Disney put that out. Uh, that was the only time that David Lynch worked with Walt Disney as far as I but know. But it was so, yeah. Glad he did. Glad yeah. that they put that out because it really is a, a lovely film. Rumor is now he's working with Netflix. Oh. They say he's got a show coming out. Wisteria. Oh. And apparently there's rumors that Kyle McLaughlin, star of Dune. <gasps> yes. And Blue Velvet. And of course Twin Peaks. Yes. And Portlandia. And Showgirls. <laughs> Rumor is he's gonna be in it. I I am so excited about about that. That's awesome. That's wonderful. I love Wisteria anyway. The word and the plant. Mm-hmm. I wonder what he's going to do. Oh, God, it could be anything. I know. It could be anything. I know. That is what we love. Anything is possible. It's going to be uncomfortable, and it's going to make a lot of people, like, not... Some people aren't going to like it. He's not for everybody. He's not for everybody. But the people that he is for, oh, boy. We love him. So, on my notes, what I got is some kind of gathering. Presentation of a monster in a big black device. So, that's that space maggot. Yeah, that giant space maggot that shows up in the water train. Yeah. And they fold time, and that's how they show up there. With his, like, weird latex-wearing henchmen. You mm-hmm. know, like, he, they look like they're all in some, like, weird 90s, like band yeah totally <laughs> here comes fucking space romstein <laughs> <laughs> with the water water space train with the giant space maggot yeah giant space maggot uh-huh giant space maggot is a great name for a song <laughs> i i'm gonna name a i want to write that i want to write the song just based around the title giant, giant space, space maggot, maggot. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm inspired. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Call up the boys. Let's start up the band. <laughs> Excellent. Woo-hoo. Oh, shit. So I guess then we go to Planet Caladan. And so here's on my notes. Here's here's our first reference of many in the night. Oh, yes. To Twin Peaks. 
in my notes, it just says, the next line down, it just says, it says Planet Caladan, then just says Cooper. <laughs> Cooper. Now, if you remember, there was a great scene in the original series, the original Twin Peaks series, where Major Briggs. Love him. Garland Briggs, Major Garland Briggs, uh, visits Agent Dale Cooper's room at the Great Northern and shows him all this space gibberish he's had recorded from space, but how yes. Cooper's name shows up every once in a while randomly. Also, yes. along with the owls are not what they seem. Yes. So anyway, I found that in my notes. Cooper. <laughs> and, and Patrick Stewart's there. And yes. Dean Stockwell is there. Picard. And so did you guys see Wild at Heart? <laughs> oh my gosh, if you didn't see it. For like 40 seconds, there's a guy in that movie with a duck voice at a in a bar yes. that Sailor and Lula are visiting in New Orleans. And he has a duck voice. Anyway, he's in this. <laughs> he's, 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 I described him as the duck voice guy from Wild at Heart. <laughs> and then, because I didn't want to write Patrick Stewart or, or uh, Kyle MacLachlan, I wrote... Picard and Cooper turn into <laughs> cube people and fight. Now, that was not a bad scene. I love Special that Special effects scene. being what they were at the time. I know. That scene was okay. I liked it. And it was like this weird, strange energy shielding. Mm -hmm. And I, I dug it. I did too. I thought it was cool. <laughs> yes. I thought it was very effective. Do you remember who won the cube people fight? Did I, Cooper or Picard? I don't remember. I don't recall either. I think it's Cooper. I don't know. It may be Picard because he's the, like, elder badass. I don't remember who wins it. But then Cooper had to fight a robot. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he fought mm -hmm. this robot. And then all these motherfuckers that look like Nazis show up. All these Nazi soldiers show up. And they're weird uniforms. There ends up being this big fight. Yes, yes. I want to, I mean, I, I, Cooper in this story. I mean, <laughs> what know. was his name? It's Peter, right? No, it's Paul. Um, I thought his dad's name was Paul. No. Uh, the whole thing Mary? is, um, <laughs> the whole thing is that his mother is part of this line and right right she's not allowed to have a boy child she she has to give birth to a girl right and the girl is supposed to follow this line of women right. that are powerful you know powerful almost none like women yeah and those, um, those they're none women trippy and and so she breaks the rules and has a boy child. And I do love how this story is told. I love that it's like narrated kind of like a fairy tale. It is. I love that. Um, and that he is this boy child that was born, um, you know, beyond the breaking of all rules and was loved so much by his mother. And so, and then we, you know, find out that it's Cooper. Um, <laughs> which is awesome but yeah i don't know i love the fairy tale aspect of this it's like space fairy tale i dig it yeah well and, and while that's normally not my thing i do enjoy the film i don't think i like it as much as you do oh well I, but i do like it i do i did i, I did enjoy it quite a bit enjoyed it we're at the fight yep we're at the fight yes indeedy and then, and then we get to where Cooper hears, the sleeper must awaken. The well, sleeper must awaken. And that's so, I wonder if David Lynch, like, wrote that in because he's really into, he's very spiritual right. and he's very into transcendental meditation and he's very mystical. And the idea of the sleeper awakening is, and they, they talk about spice opening your consciousness mm -hmm. They talk about how Paul is, you know, this child that should not have been born. They talk about a messiah. Um, and 
it, it's just, I, it, I don't know. It's fascinating to me how, how it all, how it's, how it plays out. Well, with... there is, there is, I, that is something I noticed. There's a very, there's a Christ story here. Yes. Most yes. definitely. There's very a Christ much. story here. Very much. Yeah. It takes its own twists and turns to get there, but it still is. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's definitely like the hero's journey, but it's, yeah, it's like a Christ, a Christ story. Yeah. You know, and there were many others like Horace and I could get into that and that, but we won't. But, Why um, not? well, I mean, that's just getting into like the idea of, you know, the Christ story being really, really old and not actually being just Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But that that same story has been told through many different cultures for many different gods like Horus and many others. But um, I find the, the, the story and the hero's journey um, to be quite strong in this. You know, I mean, almost every great story is kind of the hero's journey anyway. Star Wars, definitely the hero's journey. A lot of a lot of old fairy tales, you know, um, come up with all these aspects. And, uh, and this is definitely along those lines. It's part of why I love it so much. I guess I hear you on that. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, using, using the, the, the phrase, the hero's journey, almost like a theme, you know, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't feel as compelled to identify with McLaughlin, McLaughlin's character as I do in other Heroes Journey films. I felt that there was a lot more going on. I didn't feel like McLaughlin was a lead, personally. That's weird. Is it? Yeah. Granted, I only watched it the one time, so if that's weird... Well, yeah, I mean, okay. I, I, ever, I don't think it's, you know, I... I'm not saying, I shouldn't have said that that's weird, actually. I just, I don't know. That's not really how I see it. You know, it's kind yeah. of all based upon him. It would be like watching a movie about Christ and saying that Christ really isn't the lead. No, no, no. You know no, what I, I mean? Don't, we would, no, we're no, what I mean is like we're seeing Christ so story. many other things going on with so many other characters. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that, uh, that, you know, he's not, he's not, he's not the only thing going on or anything like that, you know. But he's kind of what the movie is centered no, on. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It, it really is. There's a bunch of other characters. And we're getting to know all of these different characters and the parts that they play in this particular story. But a lot of it is hinged on, you know, on on Paul being this um, possible messiah. Right. Like the aliens said. Yeah. Cooper. Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Yes. Co the next thing we see, Cooper's, Cooper's dreaming of fucking moons. Yes. And space and shit. And you know what else he's dreaming about? Fucking Sting. That's right. Fucking Sting. Yes. He is dreaming about Sting. Not fucking Sting. No, he's not. No, But he's dreaming no, about no. Sting. You, you, you know the thing. <laughs> <laughs> to quote our president. You know the thing. <laughs> <laughs> he's dreaming about Sting. Now, I fucking hate Sting. I, I was so pissed off when, this, when Sting showed up in this movie. You know, it was there was a time when I said the only thing I hate more than the police as an organization is the band the police. Oh, uh, which is No, that's not true. I actually like the band the police more than I like the police the organization. Uh, yes. Um very much. But I still hate the band. I hate the band and I hate Sting. And I fucking hate him so much. I've never understood that. But then again, you know, I hate Bruce Springsteen, so whatever. And Bruce you're always fucking playing writer. Bruce Springsteen. That's it's fucking so true. bullshit. No, every once in a while you'll do that just because. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did you say you every know. once in a while or all the time? Because I'm pretty sure I heard you say both things. I know, I know. <laughs> what I mean is that I hate Bruce Springsteen, but you tend to want to play him sometimes and i do not do that to you with sting 
I've only done it once with Pink Floyd. Why would Floyd. you do that to me with Sting? Sting sucks. Bruce Springsteen sucks. Um, but I did do that once with Pink Floyd, but it was a really good song. See Emily plays. That really was a good song. Awesome. I don't like Pink Floyd, but I, that was a good song. I love old people. Anyway, I digress. Sorry. This is our second episode of the podcast, and our goal right now is to just get a few more listeners than, speaking of, Bruce Springsteen and Barack Obama's podcast that they have <laughs> together. They have a podcast, and I don't know what they talk about. I've never listened to it, but a lot of people have, so we just want to get a few more people than them. <laughs> Nobody cares about them. One used to be president. One used to be the future of rock and roll. <laughs> oh, God. Has he ever considered the future of I rock and roll? I read that quote. Yikes. I've seen uh, the future of rock and roll and it is Bruce Springsteen have to was be the care- quote. I have to be careful. I, I heard Why? once I heard once that like Bruce Springsteen's Springsteen not fans, gonna listen to our fucking podcast. I don't know, but fans, like some guy like I think someone killed their spouse because their spouse was talking shit about Bruce Springsteen. And they just like You're not my first wife. <laughs> <laughs> hey you remember that movie dune yeah dune i like that movie um so uh i guess i guess where we go now according to my notes is uh there are these nun cenobites <laughs> <laughs> the nunabites they they demand to see Cooper, <laughs> not Agent Dale Cooper, but <laughs> Peter or Paul, but I don't mix Cooper. I call him Cooper. Yes, it's Paul. David Lynch calls him Kale. Yes, he does. He <laughs> calls him Kale, which I think is adorable. I do too. I think almost everything David Lynch does and says Fucking damn near huh? is wonderful. Anyway. Yeah, I love his little nicknames for people. I fucking, I love that. When I was a kid and the internet didn't exist, I just watched David Lynch movies and I imagined what he was like. Oh, I love you know? that. Did it come close to your imagination? No. no. No, it didn't come close at all. I thought, I mean, I, I knew the cigarettes. Right, right. I guessed the cigarettes. Yes. But, uh, but no, no. How could it? I know, I know. He's a strange cat. He's, He's a strange so fucking neat. cat. God, I would love to hang I'm out I'm so with happy with, the, 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 with the, the way he turned out to not be what I expected. Oh, gosh. I love that, too. I think he is just marvelous. I would love to be in his presence. Just because he likes to explore the dark side of the human psyche does not mean he's a bad, negative, doesn't mean he's a negative, dark guy. Oh, gosh. He is the absolute, complete opposite of negative or... Like, yeah. Mm-mm. Yep. If That's you want to make dark art, then you just go out and, by golly, you do it. You know. I I love how I mean, talking about the sleeper awakens. You know, like that is awakening, in this in this, it's your consciousness awakening while you're, while you're still in your body. Yeah. You know, many thoughts are that people are sleeping. That they're wandering around asleep. Mm-hmm. And so I love that. The sleeper awakens. It's fucking... Ah. Ooh, fuck. Mm, I Does that it. mean we have to spend a half hour talking about They Live? <gasps> Ooh, <laughs> we should just watch that and then do a we whole show. We should probably do that on a podcast. Mm-hmm. We should probably do that episode pretty soon. I love that. I, I haven't. It's been a few years since I've seen it anyway. So I I'd know. totally be into watching They Live again. I agree. It's, it, it's, it's a good time to watch that shit. Anyway, where are you with your notes? Here's my notes. Okay. Um, the head nunabite. <laughs> the head nunabite makes Cooper put his hand in a magic box like Phantasm. <laughs> totally. It was totally like Phantasm. <laughs> yes. Put your hand in the box. Put your hand in the fucking box. Yes. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. It's fear. That's fear. Yes. Same shit. All the same shit. In your mind. God damn it. David Lynch. If you're listening to this, fucking, fucking give some respect to Phantasm. Call out Phantasm and say, I took your idea about the magic box. The magic, magic pain box. box. Magic pain box. Pain fear box. Fear pain box. Fear pain box. 
I wonder if you put your hand in it. He does all those. What is David building today? I wonder if he's ever built a pain fear box. Ooh, ah. I wonder. He he's handy. Yeah, he's kind of handy. Uh huh. He builds some neat things. Um, but while in a uh, phantasm, your hand just came out of the box and it wasn't hurt. In Dune. We get to watch all the flesh get burned off his hand. Yes. Before yes. he takes it out of the box and it's unhurt. Yes. I do love that. And then I guess we go to Planet Gita Prime. And again, I apologize to the Dune nerds out there. This is I'm sorry. We we we've said it before, but we're we watch we we we're not we're not we're not Dune nerds. We're nerds for other things. There's nothing wrong with being a nerd, but if you came here trying to find a new perspective on Dune, and this is not where you're going to oh, get it. Oh, yeah. Really yeah, Dune that's nerds. for sure. We're All just... you're going to be is like, you got that wrong. You skipped that part. All that shit. Yes, that is for sure. And we understand, like, we're just not there. Um, yeah. Right. I do love this movie, though. It's a good movie. Mm-hmm. My next note is Brad Dourif is hairy and chanting. <laughs> Brad Dourif we know as Billy Bibbit from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yes. Also the voice of Chucky from the Child's Play movies. Um, wonderful actor, really. Yeah. From what I've been told, I, I from what I've been told, when he when after a uh, Cuckoo's Nest, rumor was he was going to be the next big fucking thing. Yeah. You know, he he was nominated for an Oscar awesome. and shit. He might have won it. I don't know for sure. I should have looked that up. <laughs> but he got he got that Chucky role and he's he's kind of a horror guy as of for, for the past fucking 30 or 40 years. Oh, God, yeah, you know? I mean Graveyard Shift, he was in Graveyard Shift. He's, he just shows up in that shit, you know. That's a I mean you're never out of work if you're a horror icon. That's right. You know? That's right. Horror family is loyal and loving. But you ain't getting rich either off it. You gotta keep working. Um, but yeah, he, his fucking makeup is ridiculous. All that hair, all that hair on his all face. All of those now, guys. Is it, is it, all those guys with their crazy eyebrows. It, yeah, the other guy, the duck voice guy from Wild at Heart. Yeah. Yeah, they got the eyebrows... Yes. Crazy eyebrows. Kind of eyebrows that make me want to, like, hold people down and trim them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now there are scientist Cenobites. Yeah. And they're extracting something out of a big, gross man. That's my note. so fucking that nasty. That fucking dude. That fucking baron. Ew. He is disgusting. Oh, yeah, he's foul, fucking... And he's one of my favorite parts of the whole goddamn movie. He's so cinematically fucking disgusting. And I hate him and his yeah. gross boils. And the makeup job is so good. He's so gross. What? Yeah, he's fucking... He's a... Ah. He's fucking gross. Yes. <laughs> the epitome of nasty. Super nasty. Blech. <laughs> And he floats around, which I love that. Yeah, he floats around. Ugh. Rotting and oozing and shit. And he's the biggest joneser of the fucking spice. Yeah, no, he's he's way into it. He's like mm -hmm. that fucking, he's like super dope man, right? He's just yeah. fucking. Oh, yeah. He's into the business of it. He's into the whole fucking shit. Yeah. He thinks he's got the power, too. He really does. Oh, and then you get, and then you remember who walks into the room? Sting. Fucking Sting. I love Fade. I think Fade is awesome. I love, I love, yeah. It's Looks the only a lot better time. better with a knife in his chin. It's the only time I've ever really dug Sting is in this movie. And, I mean, he doesn't have a huge part, but I think his presence is cool. He's a bad guy. And I like his name. <laughs> they spell it F F E Y D or something. F E Y D fade. Fuck Sting. <laughs> and fuck the police. <laughs> <laughs> fuck the real police. Anyway, so you remember they drag that kid into that fucking room. No, fuck the band too. Uh nah. Fuck the band. I mean and they're the... whatever. They're fuck whatever. them both. But really fuck the police. 
Did you not say fuck Bruce Springsteen earlier? Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't like him, though. I don't like him at all. You, it, It's okay to say fuck to bands that you don't like. Yeah. If they're shitty. I mean, sometimes. If they're really bad. They're fuck the police. Really, really bad. <laughs> I'm going to get sued by Dr. Drake. You're such a hater. God. (laughs) I wish you could see this look he's giving me. It's hilarious. Fuck the police. (laughs) You can't give me shit for saying that. No, I can't. (laughs) Anyway, what I was getting at, they drag that kid in. Do you remember that big guy kills that kid? Yeah. I, didn't, I never did. I never was clear about who that fucking kid was and what, the, I don't what, know. Their, what their place was in there. I'm not sure. There were things going on in the house, too. So should have just watched it again and again. Yeah, we should have watched it more than once. But, mm-hmm. but we didn't. We watched it once and we're doing this. And I feel good about it. Okay. Uh, Cooper. Then we see Cooper and his parents. Yes. This is where we find that the Cooper's uh, father... Is uh, Sutter Kane. Yes. Do you read Sutter Kane? <laughs> uh, Jurgen Pachow, or however the fuck you say his name, uh, plays plays, uh, plays him plays him, and plays Sutter Kane. But Sutter Kane's easier to say. So, And I don't remember his name from the movie. It was... Uh, Duke. It was Paul. No. It was Paul Peter. Paul is the son. Then it was Peter. The Duke. I don't know. I, I... A number one? <laughs> I don't know, but I love his mom's hair. Oh yeah, dude, she she'd have fit. She, dude, she's stray cats as fuck. I know, she's awesome. She's like. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
Mm-hmm. I'm really thinking about this being Frank Black's gang, except Frank Black has been replaced by this equally eccentric character. Yes. But not replaced, because Doom came out first, but... But you know what I'm saying. Is right, it, right. It's like a parallel swap uni- swap like, story. Almost you know? like parallel universe mm-hmm. of, yeah, yeah, exactly. Swap he's by not the same as Frank Black. Weird guy. Yeah, he's not the same as Frank Black. He's equally foul. Yes, he's foul. He's self-centered. He thinks he's got all the power. All Morally, the, they're the same person. Narcissistic piece of crap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and there's another... Sadistic. There's a, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, there is another... I should have thought before I spoke. There is another group that I want to get into. As far as teams in David Lynch films. Yeah. But I'm not there yet. We'll We're not there. there in the movie yet. We'll get there. We'll get there. Ah, uh, where are we at? Uh, this is, uh... I love your notes so These much. notes suck. This They're is, this hilarious. is gonna be the worst thing for people to listen it's to. So this is gonna funny. suck. The, the, my next note is, we learn worms defend spice. <laughs> yes. That's okay, true. so the worms defend the spice. I don't know why we, how we learn it, why we learn it. Um, that's the problem with sci-fi movies for me, I guess. They just, they, they, I, my mind wanders. That's weird. So I'm not remembering exact scenes. I'm just seeing what I fucking have on my notes. Well, um, there, we're learning about Spice. We're learning about Arrakis. We're learning right. about the fact that there is no rain that ever falls on this planet. You know, it is a dune. It's a giant sand dune, the whole fucking world. They're thought to have hardly anyone there mm-hmm. um, that really lives there because the it's so it's so dangerous, it's so intense it's and deadly and deadly. And there are fucking gigantic sandworms. You know, there are huge sandworms. I love the uh, um, that at that time we saw a lot of sandworms. Uh, in all kinds of things. It, they know? were all over the place yeah, in the 80s. Why absolutely. don't sandworms come back? I know. And I I really dug that. What I were the big ones? Cool. Well, tremors. Right. Tremors. You know. Graboids. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Um, this one. Tremors was the smallest ones. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This one. Um, there was another one. Though. Well, there was fucking Star Wars. Well, Star Wars. Or was exactly. it Empire? I think it was Empire. I'm not a Star Wars nerd either. <laughs> I think it was Empire. And uh, and then later on, you know, Beetlejuice. Yeah, Beetlejuice. Only they were striped because they were in Tim Burton world. Right. They invented stockings for thousands of teenage girls. <laughs> I know. <laughs> not Snake did. <laughs> those, those striped sandworms. Right. Love them. <laughs> I have those. Sto- I still wear those stockings. I Why wouldn't them. you? I know. They're great. This is Halloween. They're great for circuses. They're great for pirate stuff. They're great for all fucking kinds right. of things. <laughs> Harlequin, dolls, You know whatever. how many pirates had stockings like that? Probably none. None? No, I don't know. Actually, pirates probably wore some ball gowns, too. No, they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Stolen from ships. Mm-hmm. Maybe they did. Yeah. They did drink a lot of rum. They did. Okay, so next next on my note, so that's right, uh, D- uh, Dean Stockwell, a.k.a. Ben from Blue Velvet, a.k.a. Al from Quantum Leap. Yes. He's doing autopsies, and he seems to be finding secrets. But here's the thing about Dean Stockwell as an actor. He always kind of plays this really mysterious guy. Yeah. Al was the only role I've ever seen him in where he didn't play a really mysterious guy. Al was... I, Al's a great character in he Quantum Leap. Al character. is a great character. I love him. But uh, other than that, I see Stockwell play the same guy a lot. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see the Dunwich Horror? Yes. He plays the same guy in that as he plays mm-hmm. in this. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Real shifty guy, you know? Odd, mysterious. Weird. And he doesn't look like a shifty guy because it was the 70s and shifty guys were allowed to not look like shifty guys. They were allowed to look like a clown. <laughs> <laughs> What was with that fucking big ass curly hair in the seventies? Oh my it's... god! People letting their freak flag fly. 
But I don't remember what the secret was he was finding in the autopsies. You know, I don't know. It was something, something hidden inside of, like, her stomach or... Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I don't think it was ever really brought about what exactly that was. <laughs> I'm not sure. There was things happening. That's why I wanted to watch the movie again. But that's why. There were, like, weird things happening. Well, like this really podcast, sure. it's just real life, you know? We, yeah, we, we, we can't stop real life. Mm -hmm. We got to do the podcast. We, we've we made nine cents on this podcast. Yeah, I'm excited about that. For, With I'm one excited. episode, nine cents. I'm thrilled. I really am. In six years, we'll be at $10 and I can cash out. It's like the longest video poker game I ever played. <laughs> Except it's not because I didn't put any money in and people just, and, and, and nobody tells me to shut up. I wish you could see me right now. My hand is like over my face and I'm shaking my head. <laughs> like, oh God. Where are we? We're on Arrakis. Well, we're <laughs> in the David Lynch cameo. Oh, yes, David Lynch cameo. David Lynch shows up as a pilot. Yeah. He looks like one of those guys who was attacking the fucking Death Star in Star Wars. Is you he know? a pilot or is he just like this communicator? I don't even know. Oh, shit, I thought he was a pilot. Maybe I he was no idea. Sorry, Dune fans. Sorry, Dune nerds. Maybe you should write us and let us know what the hell he actually played. Tear us a new one. What the hell did David Lynch... Uh, what was he? A pilot... An operator, communicator, person. I don't know. And David Lynch, if you're listening. Oh my God, my heart's Twitter pated. But yes, you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll watch it again and again and again just to get it right. David Lynch sure. hates talking about movies. You think he wants to listen to somebody no, talk about movies? No, he does not. You're right. And do you he... think he wants to listen to somebody talk no. about Dune? No. If they're going to talk about one of his movies? You're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I'm glad you're here listening with us, though. I really am. Thanks for being here, listening with us. I'm, I'm so happy. Yes. <laughs> Where are we in your notes? Oh, we rescue a space mining crew just before a worm eats their ship. So so there's this, there's this crew, and they rescue them, and then the worm comes and eats their ship. Just like the note said. And then Cooper eats a space gummy. A space gummy. Yeah, he eats a space gummy, and he goes into Lynch Nightmare World. Oh, you remember? That's and right. everything's zooming at him, and there's oh hand God. palms and yes. body maps and charts and shit. Yes, and, it's um, getting all like super, super crazy. Yeah, it, it, it's it, and so and so. Then we just and that's another one of those things that's that's. I mean, whenever somebody talks about uh, Twin Peaks season three, Twin Peaks episode eight. Uh-huh. Everybody knows what you're talking about. That's right? the Gotta Light episode. Yeah. You know, and it's be it's been considered one of the most purely Lynchian things that's been released in decades. It's just his Yeah. Some I, people say it's I believe that one magazine called it one of the best horror films of the last ten years. It's oh yeah, just that episode. Th that Alone. episode. Yeah, I agree. It's really weird and awesome. Strange and lovely. Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a totally fucking Lynch film. Yeah, it is totally a fucking Lynch film. In outer space. In in outer space, you know, it's 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 strange that way. You know, it. I get why you didn't like it, but I, I like it. Oh gosh, it's it's so it's hard it's hard to put into words the way I feel about this movie. I think it's so you know? neat. I think it's like a. Badass and it's a whole discussion tale. that gets into different types of fandom and shit like that. Fuck. Uh, no, no, no. I can't get into that right now. Uh, fucking we, we, we. So uh, you're you're Jurgen Pakow. That's probably yes. the third different way I pronounce that name. <laughs> the, the Sutter Kane. I refer. To, I've, I've been referring to him as Sutter Kane. Do you read Sutter Kane? He finds that little lady. Uh, fucking uh, Linda, Lin, Linda Hunt. Hunt. Uh, she was in all kinds of shit. Yeah, she won uh, an Oscar, right? She did. She did for playing uh, someone of the opposite sex. Yes. Mm hmm. That was for. Hold on, I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find that out. Yeah. She won that for. Um. Because that's pretty amazing. That is. Badass. It really is. It really is. 
I'd like to see it too. It was she portrayed Billy Kwan in the 1982 film The Year of Living Dangerously. Yeah, I've never seen that. She won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. Yes, and she was just kind of like I this there's such a huge cast in this. Anyway, go on. Yeah, but she's she's dying in the fucking hallway and uh Sutter Kane comes running up to her. And, uh, and he's trying to help her, but then he gets a knife in the fucking chest. And who threw it? Bye. Dean fucking Stockwell. That's right. Fucking Ben. Smooth as fuck Ben. And so, uh, and, and then while he's laying there dying, you remember? Doesn't he give him a poison tooth? Yes, he sticks that poison goddamn, a uh, uh, tooth full of poison gas in his mouth. Gives him instructions how to, how to do it. Yeah, it's like specific. Now, again, I don't remember exactly what happens next. Uh, well, I know that he's supposed to get... He's supposed to, like, poison the main gross Baron... Right, right, we know guy, that. Right? Yeah. And what ends up happening, once they, like, get him, he doesn't need any... Like, does a poison tooth, but he gets uh, Brad Dourif. Yes. Right? It kills him and But not before Brad Dourif killed Dean Stockwell. That's right. Chucky killed Al. Yeah, Chucky killed Al. Chucky killed Al. Chucky killed Al. Somebody write a fucking song. <laughs> about how Charles Lee Ray, whose spirit is in a good guy's doll. Yeah, good guys. Did finally end up murdering Al the Hologram. Whose only, <laughs> whose only crime was to try and help Sam Beckett reach that final leap. The leap home. <laughs> yeah. He ends Ch up Chucky killed out. Indeed. Poison tooth and... God, what happens next? Let my notes right. say I that, know that Cooper uses demon voice. Oh, but that's, I mean, there's there's Shakes. all sorts of other things going on. He's gear getting ready. He's like gearing up to um, have a war, basically. To yes. fight, you know, for, uh, for the, you know, the right of, of the spice. Because, you know, the spice. He who basically rules what is it? Rules the spice, rules the universe. Well spice is uh spice is kind of this fucking spice is a force to me that seems to I mean and you know, and of course I, I think of things in all kinds of things. I think I think of things in mytholo mythological aspects, I think of things in sociopolitical aspects as well. You know, uh fucking uh spice seems like seems like a a force very much like money or capital, but even more powerful than that somehow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's some crazy drug. It's like some crazy... It doesn't feel like a drug to me. It, 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 it feels as... to me like money in <laughs> drug form. Well, I mean, the drug is so powerful that it's worth more than just about anything. Everybody wants it. It's so intense it can heal anything it can prolong your life it can give you intense amounts of consciousness it can literally fold space it can fold space <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's kind of intense it's more than just it's more than it's okay, more than I just a drug or money or anything it's like some crazy thing Quant it's some quantum drug. <laughs> you know? It folds fucking time and space so that you can like move through it like that. That's pretty amazing. And he is connected now to the people. And, yes. And he's different than than anyone else because he was the child that shouldn't have been born. Right. He wasn't supposed you to know, be born. You know, as far as far as the fairy tale goes, um, you know, it's through the lineage of women that this force and this magic and this knowledge is passed. And 
he is quite special. And so he ends up connecting and like now there's the force being um, created to fight. And yeah, he finds the voice, the demon voice thing, but it's like this crazy voice of power and vibration and frequency and all this stuff and and the word of death right Mm -hmm. something like that yeah i don't know i think it's it's awesome (laughs) that's what's happening i think where we're at at this moment with with your notes yeah my notes are uh hilarious they're a fucking train wreck (laughs) they're a train wreck (laughs) Okay, uh, Cooper uses demon voice, shares with mom to fool guards. Guess that's how they escape. <laughs> they fooled the guards and escaped. Yes. By using a demon voice. And then, that's right, Cooper's dad, Sutter Kane. Yes. He breathed all of his tooth poison. That's right. Into Brad Dorif's face. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> that part. Well, Chucky. May be able to kill Al. Sutter Kane still kills Chucky. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what do you? What do you have next? Oh God, I'm pretty clever for not re- remembering what the hell went on in this movie. You're super clever. Ah. Cooper and Mom crash ship, hide in cave, make their way across landscape trying to avoid worms. Yes, yes. And so, that's and then they end up meeting Big meeting Ed and his the, tribe is yeah, my next big, noise. Big Ed is my next tribe. note. They meet up with Big Ed big and his Ed tribe. And this tribe. Big Ed, of course, uh yes. played by uh oh shit, who the fuck was Big Ed? Um Everett, Everett McGill. Everett McGill played Big Ed in Twin Peaks. And he was the leader of this uh, tribe. Yes. And this is what I was talking about earlier, this group that I want to get to. So, Kyle McLaughlin, Agent Cooper, meets up with Everett McGill, Big Ed. Yeah. (laughs) And his tribe. Could they be much in the same way that Jack Nance and Brad Dourif are uh, 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 Frank Black's gang from Blue Velvet? Could it be that Everett McGill, Big Ed, is leading a Dune version of the Bookhouse Boys? Oh, very nice. Now, you remember the Bookhouse Boys I from sure Twin do. Peaks? Oh, yes, I Sheriff do. Sheriff Truman. Yeah. James Hurley. You got to pet the you pet your nose. Pet your nose with one <laughs> finger. Yep. The Bookhouse Boys, as Cooper said. A secret society. (laughs) Just the kind of secret society I like. (laughs) So anyway, Cooper hooks up with Big Ed and joins his fucking... Oh, yeah. uh, Worm riding union. (laughs) Not yet. But yeah. No, not yet. But we we got some worm rides coming. Yeah, there are worm rides to come. And then because Sting pisses me off so much, my next note is just, Meanwhile, gross guy and Sting... Oh, yeah. But suddenly there's a premature birth. Remember? I do. The big the big birth. Yes. She ends up um, having to... It's it's a uh, spontaneous birth. Spontaneous premature birth. Mm-hmm. And the child is... Has got all of the wisdom of a full-grown woman that would have had this passed down to her as her daughter but uh it was just some like complete freak thing that she was spontaneous birth and all of the knowledge is within her and through the movie we we hear more about her Mm -hmm. she's an interesting uh an interesting character i quite like her very much yeah i I do too i especially like her at the end but i guess we're gonna get there yeah um, I guess somebody must have been poisoned. Do you remember if anybody was poisoned at this point in the film? Because my next note is, Bushy Eyebrow Guy needs to milk Sting's cat for antidote. Oh, yeah, that's right. The, the Sting's cat. 
the uh, and, and there's a rat attached to the cat. Yes, I remember yes, that. Was. I remember that whole contraption. That was quite strange. Um, gosh, they're always. I, I'm not exactly sure, which makes me feel kind of like we should have watched the movie. A fi- fi- I don't know a million more times. But anyway, what do you have next? <laughs> Uh, well, the, the, now, uh, so Cooper's starting to raise his army. Cooper. Okay, yes. Kyle yes. McLaughlin. Yes. I don't even remember his name in the fucking movie. I, I will Paul. call him Kyle McLaughlin. Oh, it's Paul. Okay. Well, Paul, Cooper, uh, Mr. Jackpots. He's about to get his nickname <laughs> soon. He is going to train a hundred warriors. Yes. To defeat the emperor. That's right. To defend the spice. Yes. And so Cooper starts teaching them, like in, like in a, do you remember an Army of Darkness? Yes. Uh, Bruce Campbell teaching those guys, that montage where he's teaching them? <laughs> yes. So that was nothing like the scene where Cooper, where, as my notes say, Cooper teaches them some kind of sound magic. But I thought of that scene. Yeah, And no, I would have liked, I, I think that would have made um, Dune better, is if we got a montage with a bitchin' instrumental rock soundtrack of Cooper training <laughs> these folks. I love the sound Big magic. Ed. Training the Bookhouse Boys. The Bookhouse Boys. And June. next on my notes is Cooper rides a worm. Yeah, and suddenly Big they, Ed get, joins. they get to this certain point. I mean, through through all of this, him, you know, him befriending and, and creating a community with this tribe and then it's like almost like a rite of passage or something, mm-hmm. you know. And he gets out there and fucking climbs on that giant worm, and it's all super awesome. And then there's Big Ed, yeah. And before they're both the like, of... woohoo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> like that, like fucking Slim Pickens was riding that goddamn missile at I the end know. of Doctor Strange. Oh Love. my god, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not as triumphantly, but you feel that way, you know? Yeah. Especially a little while later in the film, when there's like fucking 80 people riding on top of one of them worms. They're just riding him like a fucking train now. I know, right? Later on, they just, they all get on there. Mm-hmm. They're, they become, they become friends and one with with the worms. Yeah, they do. And then them and, and, their, and their new friends and the worms team yeah. up and fight against the emperor forces. That's fucking right. And they are trained. They're like they're connected with the sound magic and the frequency, and they're connected to the whole. They understand that that they are a part of everything, and that the worms are the spice, and the spice of the worms. It's all amazing. Yeah, go to fight on worms. Oh God, these notes are just getting worse. <laughs> I, I have Cooper and friends win, and then I just wrote Mo Adib. Yeah, Mo Adib. And I thought that you would remind me of of Mo what Adib. that meant, and you have, seem to have been doing that for a while now. So, well, um, uh, Mo Adib is his father's real name. No, no, no. There's it's not a, Sutter Kane's real name. No, God damn it. Um, Sutter Kane. No, uh, his his name is Paul, but then. Right. They give him the secret name, and I really would like to know what that one is because I can't remember. But it means, it means the base of the pillar, and that's his like secret name for the tribe. Um, and the Dune nerds will know this, and I should know it, but I don't. Um, but it means the base of the pillar, and then he decides to go with a name that's more of like a nickname too, that's known more. And I believe that one is is connected to oh, what is that one connected to? But that is Moadib, and he is becomes Paul Moadib, uh, and is known by that. And so they start hearing all the other guys, like you know the Baron and and uh, Fade and all those fuckers. They start hearing about oh, and the guys that that were with the space maggot earlier on, mm-hmm. um, they start hearing about Moadib and everyone's getting really pissed off about all this shit happening and spice being, you know, nobody can, nobody can go get the spice. Um, and it's all because of Moadib, but they have no idea that Moadib is really Paul yet. 
I don't think. <sighs> or maybe they do. Now they won something like that. <laughs> they went and fought. They go and they fight on worms. And they win. And it's all triumphant. Well, I mean, they'll probably win. We'll see. I don't know for sure. It is a Lynch movie. You never can tell how these things are going to end. It also was a fucking sci-fi film that came out in the era of Star Wars. And maybe we'll talk about that a little bit <laughs> after we get to the end. Uh, my next note is Cooper and Picard reunited. So that's oh, right. Yeah. That's, that's, that, was one of those, that was one of those classic Star Wars type mm -hmm. movies. Very Han and Lando. Yeah, while they're <laughs> while they're fighting, they they see each other, mm -hmm. and he's like, "Oh, I forget what what's Picard's name? Picard? No, I, I just call know. him Picard. <laughs> mullet Picard. He's rocking that space mullet. Much like the next sentence in my notes, Riff Raff speaks to Emperor <laughs> through translation. <laughs> oh, I'm about so, space production because so it was it was this motherfucker that looks like Riff Raff perfect. from the fucking Rocky Horror Picture Show. I love it. Not to be confused with Riff Randall from Rock and Roll High School, but Riff totally. Riff Raff. <laughs> and he's talking to the goddamn Emperor about this space production. Meanwhile, fucking Cooper, I think, fucks Sean Young. Oh yeah, I think they totally get down. They're into each other. And then I don't and know Sean why Young he starts is dying. Part of uh, part of the whole thing, uh, the tribe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cooper starts dying, but she gives him some kind of medicine. Well, it's not medicine, right? What it actually is is like a very intense substance that that only the women. Um, have ever been able to handle it is uh, it has killed men and um, he does it he's like I have to he just knows that he has to drink the waters of life and so he does it and it absolutely can kill him and he freaks out and remember that part where like his mother and his sister um, are are it's all like coming out of their mouth uh, and the sister's like, it's Paul. He's drank the water of life. Mm -hmm. And they all look like they're, like, dying. It's pretty no, crazy. We have a whole, at this point in the film, we have a whole series of revelations. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know? He uh, has a huge awakening. Yes. He does. And, 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 and the, the key point is the spice is the worm. That's right. That's right. The worm is more than a protector. This is all the same. This is, they, they are one entity. We don't know how exactly. And that we are This is all some one. metaphysical That's relationship. The, they under, they are, the whole deal is that we are one. They are one. Everyone on this, you know, the tribe and the worms and the spice and the worm is the spice. All of it. Agent Cooper has his vision, as Agent Cooper is wont to do. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> where, where these worms are like peaceful. And they're and they're living a peaceful life, you know. And 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 in his dreams, he continues. The sleeper has awakened. Yes. The storm is coming. It will shape the universe. You know this total yes. again. More of that super lynch shit. You know mm -hmm. that very lost highway style style shit. We come for you. Long live the fighters. You know. Everybody comes together. To fight against these evil forces. Everybody's riding on worms now. Yes. Oh, yeah. They are all connected. Worms Every... have gone from horses and they become trains. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yes. And then they bring in the floating fat man. That fucking floating fat man. And the admiral's like, bring in the floating fat man. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then that child comes in. <gasps> this is one of my favorite parts ever. Played by, I love it. Uh, 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 a little wit. tiny. Wit. Um, Katrina Wit. Oh, I don't know. I'm terrible. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Come on. Melissa Alicia Wit. Yeah, I think that's her name. What the fuck is it? God damn it. That's bullshit. Melissa New. Something Wit. Something Wit. God damn it. God damn it, I'm going to kill myself Alicia? if I can't fucking remember what the hell this is. Hush your mouth. You hush your mouth. Mm-mm. 
It's mm. it's it's Alicia with a most part of the time. That's what I thought. That you guys were saying. I don't know. I don't think I've seen her. Now everybody get that. My my goddamn phone's turned up. Everybody can hear it. Click click click. Bloop bloop bloop. Alicia Witt. Yeah. Who is Alicia Witt? Little tiny. Alicia anyway, she Witt. goes on her tirade. Oh hell yeah, she does. She is like. Do you want my notes or do you just? Yeah, wanna I want. I want to hear your notes. Okay, too. so my notes are just: child confronts emperor and crew, talks to them like exorcist. Revealed as <laughs> Paul's sister. Yes. She says Paul is Moadib, is yes. still alive, and a bunch of creepy horror movie shit. <laughs> a bunch of creepy horror movie shit. She's awesome. She gets all she was like, awesome. super cool. And she's like, I have I have a message from Moadib. And they're like, what? Yeah. I love it. Just her whole presence is just so... Creepy. She plays it like a fucking hag, you yeah. know. She plays it like a fucking like witch an, hag, well, you know? which is exactly what she's. She's almost as if she was instantly this old woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the the wisdom passes down through these women, but with her spontaneous strange birth, it was like all of the wisdom hit her, and she's like this super old lady. Um, yeah, I love her. She just lets them have it. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it was great. Mm -hmm. Um, My next note is fight between worm riders and cyber Nazis. You remember, <laughs> you remember so some of these Nazis. Nazis, they just look like Nazis. Other ones have these weird digital screens over their eyes. Yes. You remember? Yes. But they still look like Nazis. Yeah. They look like some future Gestapo. Yeah. If you think of those, if you think of those classic Gestapo outfits, that head to toe black leather with the hat, the leather They're trench coat, all that shit, you know, that, that Gestapo outfit, the, the Judas Priest outfit, you know, it's, it's, and it's, and, a and, a oh, fuck, I forgot what, and, 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 and bring it to the 21st century in the time of cyber things. Yes. You know? Space worms. Oh and, boy, that did. I didn't do that well at all. And planet That's all right. <laughs> birthing space maggots and such. It's a different time. I know. It's a different time. Alternate realities, perhaps. Different Nazis, different Nazi fashion. Mm -hmm. Same creepy shit in so many ways. Alia kills the fat floating man. And sends him into the worm's mouth. Yeah, she fucking does. She totally does. It's awesome. She's awesome from the very... Like, the whole ending, she just owns it. She just owns the end. It's amazing. She's so great. I know. I love it. Yeah. I love the whole fairy tale. I love this strange, wonderful space fairy tale. It's cool. It's all spiritual and shit. <coughs> it is. I love it. It is. Um, speaking of fairy tale shit, now all of a sudden there's like maybe going to be this truce, right? Yeah. There's this meeting between uh, Agent Cooper and his worm riding bookhouse boys. That's right, worm riding bookhouse boys. And the Emperor <laughs> with his cyber Nazis and his Cenobites, because they're also <laughs> Cenobites, remember? Yeah, that's right, those fuckers that were hanging out with the space maggot <laughs> in the train. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the water train. Was was the guy who looked like Riff Raff, like, one of the Cenobites? No, the Riff Raff, wasn't Riff Raff guy pick the uh, space Picard? No, space, space Picard is not the same as Riff Raff. Space Picard looks like old Riff Raff. This was a guy who looks like Riff Raff, but not so much that you'd say, hey, it looks like Riff Raff. You'd just say, hey, that guy looks like Riff Raff. You know, it's, <laughs> there's a difference in tone. <laughs> you'd have to watch the movie again if yeah, you don't know what I I'm talking to. about. No, he, there was a guy that looked like Riff Raff, not Picard. Okay. Not Picard. I don't remember. I wish that I did. Well, he had a big... He was talking about, about a bunch of shit. So that fat fucker went in and, 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 and 
A truce, blah, blah, blah. Oh, right, right. Fucking Agent Cooper and Sting from the stupid fucking police, they fucking have a fight. Yeah, him and Fade. It's He's really like, Come dumb. On. It's a and shitty everybody's, fight. And everybody's like, oh, no, don't fight Fade. And Picard's like, no, I'll fight him for you. And Cooper's like, no, I must. It's all, I have to do it. I love this it Star Trek silly. Twin Peaks cross universe we've created. I know. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shitty fight. I know. It was crappy. It was dumb. And then Sting was biting and shit. I know. Jumping about. Jumping about like fucking like a, I, you know what I, you know what it you made me think of. You just thought it was shitty because you hate Sting. No, I thought it was shitty because it was <laughs> shitty. It's not my fault. Sting can't do anything that's not shitty. That's not. I got. That's nothing. That's not on me. That's not on me. If you're gonna put the fucking witness something that Sting does and say it's not shitty, well, <laughs> you're not an honest fucking person. You're not honest. You're not being honest. You're silly. Everything he does is shitty. Everything Sting does. I'm every single thing. I'm certain that there are people that are going to disagree. Fuck me. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to say I'm going to say David Lynch didn't didn't like this movie because of Sting. <laughs> I bet if Sting had been played by anybody else, he would have loved it. <laughs> I bet you are quite wrong. Everybody else in the cast was one of his regulars. <laughs> <laughs> Julie noted. <laughs> He'd have been fucking way happier if fucking, uh, oh Billy gosh. Billy Idol. Huh? Billy Idol. No, me. no, no, no. Not Billy Idol. Not Billy Idol. No, it would have had to have been, uh, oh golly, who could it have been? Maybe that guy who played Bobby Briggs. Oh God. Uh, Dana Ashbrook. Bobby Briggs. He would have made a bitch and sting. Oh God. If I could go back in time and make Dana Ashbrook the singer of the police, I would do that. <laughs> Actually, fuck that, dude. If I could go back in time and make somebody the singer of the police, it'd be James Hurley. Oh, God. No. No. Oh, Seth. Yikes. And now you have to think about Roxanne being sang in James Hurley's voice, and oh, you can't do it. No, it's I've just no. tried, and it's not possible. You'll fucking go insane trying I might to make blow yourself your fucking head up. trying to trying to oh, trying God. to imagine that. No, terrible, honey. We've gotten tremendously off point. <laughs> yeah, where are we? What happened? Oh, oh the fight. Fuck the yeah, fight there's between a big fight Sting between and Cooper. Cooper and Sting, Fade and Moadib. Sting, Cooper ends up putting a goddamn knife through Sting's fucking chin. I know, it was your favorite part. It's of, the best part of, of the movie. Oh, yeah, when, yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best part of the movie. And then there's this big background, background shot, you know? It's like, we're, we're like closing in on the end of the movie. The movie ends fucking quick. Yeah, oh yeah. All of a sudden it's like, boom, done. You know what it ends a lot like hmm. in its quickness as far as it's like building story. And it's like the good guys fight the bad guys and win. And then it's over. There's a mild celebration. It's very Star Wars. Oh, yeah. It's very Star Wars. Well, I mean, in that aspect, I guess, I don't think it's anything like. I, I know that people are like, oh, it's so much like Star Wars, but I don't. I don't know. I feel there are like, ways it's not like Star Wars, yeah, but there are ways it's, it's way like Star Wars. Story. It's a no. different story, but it's the same story, kinda. Nuh-uh. It's, I mean, it's not the same story, but the beats are all the same. You know what I'm saying? The beats are all the same. I suppose. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying the beats are all the same. I get, I mean... You would know more about that stuff than I would. I'm just like, oh, I like this. No, no, no. I that's not a. That's like, not a technical. That doesn't know. need to be a technical thing. You've seen Star Wars. You've seen Dune. Now yeah, we're just simply arguing I opinions. I don't know. I don't know. I ain't schooled in taste. 
I didn't pay attention when I was schooled in anything else. <laughs> it does end really abruptly. I was really. It like, ends what? abruptly, like what? Star Wars what? does. What? That was it. I'll just, it's over. When was the last time you watched Star Wars? Well, if you, Star Wars ends it's been a while really quickly. Because our the Death Star really blows up, and all of a sudden, like there's it. just a fucking, tr- fucking ceremony. Remember, our kid doesn't like it, so we I tried know. watching Star Wars with him, and he didn't like it. So it was probably when it's been a while for me too. Yeah, when 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 the the jet was little. Yeah. It's been many a year. Well, I've seen enough times to know that there are similarities. I understand David Sandwich. Lynch not wanting to make a movie like this again. He he David Lynch did the best Star Wars ripoff that David Lynch could do. Not ripoff, but you know what I mean. This was the pattern of sci-fi films at the time. You know what I mean? Yes, I know what you're trying to say. In fact, this was kind of the pattern of sci-fi films for like decades. I I really love Dune. I think Dune is special. I think it's good. I, it's way better than I thought it was going to be. I never had seen it before. I never had planned on seeing it before, strangely enough. as I've seen all of the other David Lynch shit. But I never planned on seeing Dune. And I'm glad I did. Because it was so much more a Lynch film than Lynch fans allow themselves to believe. And much more a Lynch film than Dune fans allow themselves to believe. It's simply right. not pure enough for purists. Yes. I guess. But I'm not a purist, and I think it was a really good film. I think it was a really good film. I understand where David Lynch would have been frustrated. It's a little bit more than he's used to handling. But it's a good film. I love it. I, I love can say it. the same thing over and over again. I'm so, so glad that you liked it. I'm, I, I'm excited that you liked my surprise. I'm really excited to see what your surprise is. God, it could be anything. Yeah, it next week is. is my fucking, or next time, I don't know if it's a weekly thing. Next time is my is my movie pick, Dandelion Pick Dune. Our That's first right. episode, if you haven't watched it, that was Freaks. We just picked that together as a as a as a as a premiere. Yes. And then Dandelion Pick Dune, and I'm going to pick something for this next one, and then we're going to put it out on the internet. That's right. And ask, what do you want us to see? And I decided what we're going to do is we're going to fucking, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to take every, every suggestion that people have and we're going to write it down. We're going to put it in a fucking hat and and we're going to put their, their, their name or whatever, you know, whether they came to us from Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Excellent. You know, and we will give them a shout out. Excellent. When we do, because we'll, we'll just draw every four weeks, we'll draw a fan episode out and we'll do that movie. That's If we, as long as we can get a hold of it. There are some movies we can't get a hold of. <laughs> but yes, get in touch with us at moviesfromthemadhouse at gmail.com or uh, on your favorite social media sites. That's right. We're on Instagram and Facebook. And Slasher. And Twitter. That's right. Mm-hmm. Making it easy for you to get a hold of us. That's mm-hmm. right. <laughs> easy like Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. And in the meantime, you can watch The Madness at our YouTube channel. Yep, that's a fun one. That's mm-hmm. a fun thing. That's right. You can, th- those are those are watch alongs. You know, they're just a, they're 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 not even watch alongs. They're uh they're 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 horror host shows. You know, yeah. Elvira style, Joe Bob Briggs style. We've been doing that for a few years. So find us on YouTube. Movies from the Madhouse. Look at that. Watch Demon Witch Child. That's the best one. Oh my god, it's so much Although, fun. you can watch Carnival Soul, The Night of Living Dead, you can watch uh, The uh, Screaming Midnight, Skull, and Midnight Bucket I'll of Blood, At Midnight I'll Take Your Soul, uh, <laughs> Countess House Dracula, by the Cemetery. <laughs> Zombie Flesh Eaters, Carnival Soul, S- Spider Baby, <laughs> all those are on there, and more to come. Yes. Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory happened. Yes, it did. So anyway, do that. Tell us what you want to watch. Um, thank you so much for joining us this yes. evening. Uh, Dune. Uh, Dune rock. Dune was great. Dune was cool. Love it. Um, I guess that's it. I guess so. I hope you have unpleasant nightmares. <laughs> and remember, <laughs> whether you're hotter than hell or cool as a corpse, we'll see you in your nightmares. Ooh. <laughs>
Ooh. The dog snoring.